Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. This is the first in a series of three videos that I'm intending to put out discussing the challenges in the Ritual League. So the first video is going to look at the 12 challenges that I feel are easiest. In fact, I'm going to discuss the easiest 15, uh, and that will be enough for you to earn the Ritual Weapon effect. You don't need to do absolutely every single one of these, uh, but the ones that you don't quite need to do to get into, into your first 12, uh, 12 are ones that would be logical things to do anyway, like hitting level 90. The second video will cover the next uh, few challenges that would be needed to hit level uh, to hit 24 challenges and earn the ritual character effect. Uh, and then the third video will cover all of the rest of them. Uh, so that if you're going for 36 for the hideout uh, or 40 for the maximum totem pole, then that's the things that you will need to keep in mind. So, uh, first up we have adequate preparation. Uh, this is a pure training challenge, uh, and it just requires you to do some pretty basic things that you can do during Act 1. Uh, I will just quickly add that there is a spreadsheet that you can see here, taking out most of the right side of this video, and this can be downloaded from my blog, sergog.com, uh, and I'll put a link to it below as well. Uh, where I say progression, that's about how far through the game you're likely to need to be in order to get, uh, to get there. Uh, and then tier is an indication of whether I think it's uh, one of your first 12, whether I think it's one of your first 24, whether I think it's part of your first 36, or whether it's one of the ones that you only do if you are going for a complete 40 challenges. Uh, fair warning, going for 40 challenges is pretty grindy most of the time. Uh, it's going to require you to do thousands of maps. So, adequate preparation is in tier act 1 because that's all you need to do. Uh, you'll need to equip a rare weapon. You'll find heaps of these during Act 1. Uh, only equip one that's actually useful for your character, of course, uh, but you should have no trouble finding one. Uh, a Quicksilver Flask. Uh, you can get these from as quest rewards from two of the quests uh, early in the game. Uh, one of them is Act 1, uh, the medicine chest quest that's in the title island, uh, and the other one is in Act 2, uh, and that comes from the Great White Beast quest. Keep that one in mind. It'll be important later. Uh, if you do the Act 2 one, you'll get a better Quicksilver Flask uh, because it will be high enough item level that it can roll the powerful mod of Adrenaline. For boots with at least 10% movement speed, uh, this is just teaching new players that movement speed is one of the most powerful defensive layers in the game because ultimately if a monster is attacking you and by the time that their attack actually resolves, uh, you've moved out of the way, that attack doesn't work. Uh, so for that reason, uh, adequate, uh, adequate preparation is just teaching you three things that you should be doing already during Act 1. Uh, so that's all we've got there on that one. Uh, don't worry if you miss any of these in Act 1, you can always do them in Act 2 or 3 or whatever. Uh, complete Ritual Encounters 1 is also very doable during Act 1. Uh, you'll need to complete a Ritual, so that means uh, do the Stone Circle Encounter, uh, kill all the monsters there without dying, uh, and then at that point you will receive credit for completing a Ritual. Uh, when you've done all the rituals you want to do in a zone, uh, there'll normally be three of them in early in early zones and then three to four in late zones, uh, then you will be able to purchase items from a menu uh, using points that you've earned from killing monsters in those ritual encounters. Sometimes you'll be able to afford the, to purchase an item outright. Uh, so for instance, you might find an alchemy orb and it costs 350 ritual points. Uh, and then you might also have there an Exalted Orb that costs 5,000 points. If you've got uh, 1,200 points, then you can buy that Alchemy Orb uh, and you can afford it. You can't afford the Exalted Orb, uh, and so you would have, have the option of deferring a favour. And what this does is it costs you 15% of the item's cost, and then it causes that item to appear in a later, uh, in a later um, list of rewards that you get. Uh, and when it reappears, it will have a 10% reduced cost. So that Exalted Orb, it's 5,000 the first time. You spend 750 to put it, uh, to put it on lay-by, uh, and then when it comes back, it will be 4,500. If you buy it the first time, great, you pay 4,500 tribute. If you don't, you'll be deferring it again for another 750, so 15% of the base cost, and then when it comes back, it'll be 4,000. If you don't buy it, uh, it'll creep up 5% of its cost. I believe it's 5%, maybe it's 10%. Uh, and if you let it get back to its original full price and don't buy it again, then it goes away. So that's how ritual encounters work. Uh, but all you need to do to get, this, uh, to get this challenge is just to defer a favor once, that's all. I complete these quests. This is gonna require you to get to act 10. 
Uh, so you'll need to basically be all, uh, at the threshold of fighting Katava in Act 10. Uh, you'll need to do the Great White Beast, which is in Act 2. Uh, this is an optional quest, but it's a pretty good one because it drops a higher item level Quicksilver Flask as a reward. Uh, so I kind of recommend doing it anyway. Uh, Indomitable Spirit is a must-do. This is in Act 4 and it grants a skill point. Bestel's Epic is in Act 6. Uh, I can't even remember what ro rubbish it gives as a reward. Uh, that's why I haven't done it. Uh, Wings of Vastery is, from memory, a uh, an Act 8 quest that grants a unique jewel. Uh, and again, these are these are pretty good jewels, although they don't they're not needed on every build. And then Map to Soartha is an Act Ten optional quest, uh, which also has rubbish rewards. Uh, anyways, to get these challenge, you'll need to do them all. And as you can see, I haven't done them yet because I haven't been focused on challenges. Uh, but if you run through the through the acts normally, uh, just doing what is directly on your path, you will get Great White Beast and Indomitable Spirit. You probably won't get the other three, but you can come back later and do them in five to ten minutes flat. Five minutes if you got every waypoint, uh, ten minutes if you didn't. Defeat these act bosses one is really straightforward, and these are absolute gatekeepers of your progress through the game. Uh, so you're going to need to get them down if you're wanting to get into endgame at all. And there is no path to no realistic path. Uh, to getting 12 challenges that doesn't involve completing Act Bosses 1 and Act Bosses 2 for that matter. Uh, just because you'll need to get into maps in order to, to complete 12 of the challenges. Uh, next up we have Complete Encounters 1. Now this one's interesting. This is a little bit of an introduction to past League mechanics. Uh, so Val side areas are a throwback to the Sacrifice of the Val expansion 1.1 which was many years ago now. Uh, these Vile Side areas are found in about 10% of story zones and 10% of maps. Uh, you just need to find one that you can beat, go in there, kill its boss, and open the Vile Vessel, uh, which will be a special loot chest. Do that, and you will receive the uh, you will receive credit for this. Uh, it's pretty normal for players to do a couple of these, um, you know, uh, to do like quite a few of these just by chance, just while you're exploring through the game. Uh, so you'll probably get this without trying it. Defeat a Possessed Monster is an interesting one. Now, uh, Possessed Monsters are a relic of the very old Torment League. Uh, these are the ghosts that you sometimes see flying around. Uh, if one of those ghosts is chased around, they will they will run away from your character, and they will uh, if they stay for three seconds near a rare monster, they or a unique monster, they will actually possess that unique monster, making it much stronger and somewhat more lucrative. That is the clum that is the clunky and awkward way to achieve encounters one. Uh, if you don't get far in mapping, it will be the easiest way to do it as well. However, it's not the only way you can do it. Once you're solidly at endgame, uh, there is another way of doing that. Uh, and that is, and I'll just quickly minimize oh, it didn't actually succeed in minimizing that. Let me uh, let me just go into OBS and hide the spreadsheet for a second here uh, so that I can show you the thing you're looking for. Uh, if you get into the mapping system and also complete the Maven's three boss encounter in Lex Proxima, uh, you will be entitled to allocate the, uh, the Atlas passives Seance. Uh, Seance will cause up to 20 rare monsters in these areas to be possessed, uh, and that will cause it so, uh, that will make it so that it is absolutely and utterly trivial uh, to complete this challenge. So that is something that you will uh, definitely want to keep in mind as an option there. Um, and something has gone really strange with my um, spreadsheet. So let me just close that and reopen it and see if that, that has seemed to have uncrangled it there. Okay, so that is the that, that is the Possessed Monster section. For Prophecies, uh, you will find silver coins in adventuring uh, from the first zone that you can get them in, I believe, is the Climb in Act 1. Uh, just take them to Navani and say, Seek Prophecy. She'll give you a little quest to do. Uh, so you see here that I've got Gilded Within. Uh, you'll slay a powerful foe and it will drop a rare item. The Plague More 2. Uh, and I can do that in any of these areas. There'll be a bunch of monsters to slay. Uh, all you need to do is complete one of these. And then at that point you will receive credit for this. Uh, some of these quests are easier than others. Uh, but some of them are just really free. Uh, so for instance there's one called The Lost Maps. And all you need to do to get credit for The Lost Maps is travel to a specific zone in Act 7 and then the prophecy will trigger and six tier one maps will drop on the ground. 
Complete a best encounter at the bestiary blood altar can be done anytime after Act 2. And when you encounter Einhar, uh, Einhar will be in zones starting with, uh, starting pretty much from the beginning of Act 2. Uh, there'll be a whole bunch of various beasts that he'll help you capture. Uh, the most useful thing that you can do with this is to augment an existing flask that already has a good prefix but has no suffix on it. Uh, you can grant things like uh, immunity to bleeding on your flasks. So you see here that this Enduring Divine Mana Flask of Warding that I'm using on my character. The way that I rolled this was that I firstly used Alteration Orbs until I had an Enduring Divine Mana Flask. Uh, it had no suffix. Then I went to Einhar's Menagerie. So you just talk to him and say visit Menagerie. And then there's an option in his uh, crafting options that where you need to kill four beasts and then uh, your flask can be upgraded. So that's a really easy one. Uh, it's also really, really powerful to get the hang of uh, beast crafts because there's a lot of them that are quite solid. Okay, so the next one that we have is Ritual Encounters 2. Complete four Ritual Encounters in a single area. Now this, in my experience, the first time I encountered this was Act 8. Uh, other people have encountered it as early as Act 6. Uh, I believe that it is RNG as to whether you get three or four in an area, but the higher that the level that you're in, the weaker the bias towards getting three is. So I believe in Acts 1 to 5 you can only get three. Starting from Act 6, there is a strong bias towards getting three, but you can get four. You've got a chance of getting four, but normally you'll get three. Uh, starting from maps, uh, it seems like it's more 50-50. So completing four rituals in, in a single area is really easy. Uh, Rerolling favours is something that costs 2,000 uh, tribute, and that's something that you can start realistically affording from Act 8 onwards. Spend at least 2,500 tribute on a favour, again, this starts in Act 8. I don't recommend going out of your way to do this, uh, just pick things that are already good, because the like you're going to do all of these things through natural play, a gameplay so many times uh, that you'll have no trouble getting this challenge completed. So yeah, Act Six it can be done. Um, as I said, I thought it was um, I thought it was something that you could do in uh, in Act Eight, but it is actually Act Six. So let me just change that there. Okay, complete ritual types. Uh, there are something like twenty different types of rituals. However, five of them are very common. Bitter, the cold themed ones. Uh, Dreaded, which is I think the damage over time theme. Fluctuant, which is the uh, lightning themed. Infernal and Violent. Actually, sorry, uh, Dreaded is chaos, is chaos themed. Violent is physical damage themed. Infernal is fire. These are the common ones. Then there are rarer versions like the Glacial Ritual, which is an upgraded version of the Bitter Ritual. The Apocalyptic, which is an upgrade of the Infernal. Uh, you will find all five of these and you will find them early. Uh, this is no difficulty at all. Uh, I think that you'll have no trouble finding this uh, within like doing within 20 zones, and that's why I put it as Act 6. You can possibly get it earlier than that. Defeat Act Bosses 2 is another Gatekeeper encounter. Uh, you got to beat Katava to get into mapping, and if you are interested in guides to these bosses, ask for them in the discussion below. Uh, normally I've only focused on what I might term endgame bosses, uh, but they're, they're certainly so, uh, these bosses can be mechanically complex, uh, and so I'd be happy to put some out if there's enough interest in them. Our Complete Encounters 2 comes up next. Now, this is another introduction to past league mechanics. Uh, abysses are available from Act 6 onwards. Uh, they're the little cracks on the ground. They'll be in 10% of zones. Uh, you will need to walk on the crack in the ground, and it will, just, it will move uh, and release a trail of monsters with it. Follow this trail of monsters, kill everything, and eventually you'll be rewarded with either a treasure chest or, uh, in maps only, uh, a portal into another realm. These are um, these are basically really common, really easy to do. Complete a breach is just as simple as finding one of the little hands on the ground that uh, the breach hands uh, that start appearing in uh, in the game in maps. Uh, metamorphs appear in maps only, and blights appear in maps only. Breaches, Metamorphs, and Blights are 1 per 10 maps. Uh, on average, it's going to take you 18 and a third maps to encounter all three of these by, by chance. Uh, and obviously, there's a fair bit of variance in that. Uh, some people will be, you know, might go 50 maps without getting a single Blight. Uh, but the vast majority of people will get them before about 30. We'll have one of each of these. Uh, the Abyss comes for free because you'll get it while you're leveling. 
So yeah, bit of an introduction to past league mechanics, uh, but one that's very, very easy to do. Uh, fair warning, metamorphs are tough encounters, uh, and blights can be tough encounters too. Uh, so this might get to the point where if you feel like your characters say, you know, you're able to progress to tier 7 and 8 maps, but you're having a bit of trouble with them, uh, you might find that you need to drop back to lower tiers in order to be able to complete Metamorph and Blight encounters. Uh, this won't always be the case. You'll be able to power your character up if you keep playing longer uh, to the point that you don't need to worry about that. But uh, there's no shame in just saying, oh, you know what? I've got my 11 challenges. This is my 12th one. I'm just going to grind tier 1 maps until I get it and just scour the maps. Uh, you'll eventually get there. Okay, so next up we have the Vendor Recipes. Uh, you'll notice that this is one that I've been lazy and haven't got around to doing myself. Uh, here, there's a whole lot of recipes in the game where you can l throw a bunch of items to a uh, to an NPC at once, and they will give you back a special reward for doing so. Uh, so what I'm going to do is give a quick example of one of these. Uh, do I have I done the sextant one yet? No, I have not. Okay, so let's just uh, demonstrate with the sextant and also with the maps one. So I'm just looking for maps that are currently at 20 quality. Uh, if I've got any already, uh, you know what, I'll just uh, waste some chisels and make one. So, uh, the first recipe that I want to discuss is the, uh, the map and the sextant, uh, because I've got those handy here. So, if you sell three of the same sextant to an NPC, they'll give you one of the higher tier. This does not work with the awakened sextants, uh, so three awakened sextants uh, will not become a single elevated sextant. Uh, but you know, good good try, but it doesn't work. Um, so that's one of the that is one of the um, one of the various recipes you'll need. Uh, you'll see here that I've got a, a single map that is twenty quality. Uh, this applies to flasks as well. If you sell a single, actually, it applies to flasks. It applies to um, to torso armor, to, to gloves, to helmets, to boots, and to weapons. Uh, if you sell a single item that is at 20 quality, uh, you will receive back one of whatever the appropriate quality, uh, quality item is. If instead of selling one map that had 20 quality on its own, I sold a collection of maps that had a combined sum quality of 40% or more, then I would receive one as well. Uh, you can also do this with gems, and then with gems you'll receive gem cutters prisms. So that's a slightly wasteful way to get the uh, to get the cartographer's chisel reward. Uh, but to be honest, whilst there are other recipes that you could use that are slightly more efficient, uh, they take too much mucking around and wasting time. Uh, you can turn four blacksmith's whetstones and a map into a cartographer's chisel as well, uh, but you'll need to pick up a specific base, and honestly, it is not worth your time. Just waste three chisels like I did. Take a map that's already that's already scoured, raise it to twenty quality, and just vendor it and be done with it. So, for the other uh, for the other things, life flask. There are two recipes that will work here. You can either vendor three of the same tier of life flask, uh, and then you will receive one tier higher. This doesn't work with uh, eternal life flasks because there is no higher tier, and I don't think it works with divine life flasks either. Uh, but for any of the leveling flasks, this is actually quite a useful recipe. Uh, if you say, for instance, vendor three medium life flasks, you will receive back one greater life flask. Uh, very useful while you're leveling. Orb of Chance. Uh, the easiest way to get this is to vendor two rare items that have exactly the same name. Now this might sound like it's not easy, uh, but the reason that it's easy is that there is a very common strongbox mod uh, that causes the that causes items to drop duplicated. So you'll get two copies of the same item. Uh, one of them will be normal, one will be mirrored and thus unable to be modified. Uh, when you get a rare item from one of these Calandra boxes, you'll get two copies of it. They'll have the same name as each other, so you can just vendor both and be done with it. There are other recipes that'll get you an orb of chance as well. Uh, for instance, you can vendor a unique wool gloves plus a rare wool gloves plus a magic wool gloves plus a normal wool gloves, uh, and that will re return five orbs of chance. Doesn't need to be wool gloves, it's just the first uh, base item that came to mind. Um, there's a bunch of other things you can do for that as well, but that they, they take more messing around. The easiest one is just to find one of those strong boxes. You'll probably find that through normal gameplay. 
Chaos Orb. Chaos Orb has a little bit of a bug with it. Uh, so, and in fact, let me just bring back my uh, spreadsheet at this point. Uh, Chaos Orbs, there's a bug with this that means that it's basically coming for free. If you collect Chaos Shards from the ground, uh, and you go from having 18 of them in your inventory to, to going over 20 and get a Chaos Orb that way, uh, at the time that I'm recording this video, you'll get credit for this. That's probably not intended, uh, but it is working at the moment. If that no longer works, then the actual intended recipe that you use is that you vendor the following. One rare item for each inventory slot on your character. So that is left, oh, well that is two rings, one belt, one amulet, one set of boots, one set of gloves, one helmet, uh, one torso armor, and then something for each hand. This can be a single two-handed weapon, or it can be a one-handed weapon plus one shield, or it can be a one-handed weapon plus a second one-handed weapon. Uh, you never need a quiver in this recipe, so if, you, if you're using a bow as your two-handed weapon, that's enough. When you use this recipe, uh, you, you will receive a reward based upon the lowest item level of the items that you submit. If the lowest item level is in the range 1 to 59, you will receive chance orbs. If the lowest item level is in the range 60 to 74, you will receive chaos orbs. And if it's 75 or higher, you will receive regal orbs. You will receive one if uh, you will receive one of that orb by default. You will receive an additional one if all of the armor and weapons are 20 quality, and you will receive an additional one if every single piece is unidentified. Uh, people often use the unidentified chaos recipe uh, as it's termed by players to make a lot of currency at the very start of a league, like when you're really just getting going, your character's really weak and all. Uh, it's a good way to get yourself started. Uh, and so that's one way that you can do this. Note that this is also one of the alternatives for the chance of a recipe if you don't encounter a strong box of Calandra. For maps, uh, this one's really simple. Find three of the same map and vendor them all at once. Uh, so let's just have a quick look, say uh, I'm just looking for three of the same map that I don't actually intend to run. I hate the Coral Ruins map. Uh, sorry to those of you that like it, uh, but I absolutely loathe this one. Uh, so I'm just going to vendor the three, three Coral Ruins. They're all the same tier, and you'll notice that I received back a tier 15 map, so one higher uh, in the same Atlas region. And that's that recipe done. Uh, Onyx Amulet, you will need to vendor an amulet with a blue skill gem, a red skill gem, and a green skill gem. Uh, this will actually maintain the amulet's item level, and it will maintain the amulet's influence types, if it has any. Uh, this can be quite a powerful little recipe if you pick up a coral amulet, for instance, uh, and it's got an influence type that you're after. Like, let's say you pick up a coral amulet and it is shaper and hunter influenced. Uh, there is a divination card that makes this pretty common. Uh, then you can turn that into an onyx amulet instead, which is still shaper and hunter influenced uh, by using this recipe. Prismatic ring, uh, here you need to vendor each of the three different types of two stone rings. So if you have a blue and red two stone, a red and green two stone, and a green and blue two stone, vendor all three of them together and you will receive a prismatic ring. Uh, the prismatic ring will have an influence type if that influences on all three of the input rings. Uh, additionally, there is a special version of this recipe, the prismatic ring recipe, for three unique items, uh, Beric's Grip, Beric's Respite, and Beric's Pass, uh, that become the taming. I have not personally tested whether the taming vendor recipe is able to be used for complete vendor recipes or not. I kind of assume it can be, uh, but again, uh, it's one of those things that I just do not know. Uh, acquire the Maven's Beacon. Uh, this is something that will happen automatically about the fifth time that you run a tier five or higher map. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to ascertain exactly when because people tend to progress past it quickly, uh, but you will encounter the Envoy in maps starting from, I think, the first time that you encounter one of the Conquerors of the Atlas, uh, and then you will encounter the Maven's Beacon about that time as well. Uh, essentially, the Maven's Beacon will be something that will be given to you in a map, uh, and then you install it into your map device and gain access to the Echoes of the Atlas content. Like I say, that will typically come about the fifth or sixth tier five or higher map that you run. Okay, so we're going to skip a couple here. Uh, we're going to skip over the uh, 
Encounters 3 and Turning Divination cards. Not because these are particularly difficult challenges, uh, just because they're ones that I don't think will fit into your first 12. Uh, Obtain Ritual Rewards is next. This one's interesting in that it seems like it's really difficult and it often would be in other leagues. However, uh, the fact that you need to get all 20 different types, and some of these are rarer than others, uh, so for instance, you'll have things like, um, I think gems are pretty rare, delirium rewards are a little bit rarer than the rest. Uh, you will find that some of these are rarer than others and it will take you a little while to get all of them, but you're just going to get it through natural gameplay, especially if you are willing to uh, buy something you don't actually want. Uh, so you'll find that by the time that you are in low tier maps, you'll frequently be offered all of these different reward types. And all you need to do is just bring up your challenges screen and say, oh, you know what? I've got everything except the heist reward. Next time I see a stack of rogue markers, uh, I'm just gonna buy them, even if I don't really want them. Or maybe you go, oh, I've got everything except the Legion one. And then you see an incubator and you're like, ah, oh, I'm not really interested in this incubator at all, but I'll take it because it'll finish this challenge. That's really all you'll need to do. I expect that you will have this one done uh, certainly by the time that you've done a couple of dozen ritual encounters in maps. Uh, it's really not difficult. The reason I say in maps though is that some of these only spawn in maps. Uh, I believe you can't get the metamorph rewards until you're in maps, that's uh, Catalyst. Uh, and I think that's the case with a couple of the others. So just going through what sort of rewards to look for for each of these. Abyss is Abyss Jewels. Harbinger is going to be Harbinger Shards mostly. Uh, Harbinger Orb Shards. Heist is going to be Rogue Markers or Contracts, or Blueprints if you're lucky. Uh, Blight is going to be Oils mostly, uh, sometimes also Blighted Maps. Uh, Breach will be Breach Stones or Breach Splinters. Legion will be Incubators or Maraketh Splinters or similar um, Legion Splinters. Maps are Maps. Currency is Currency. Uh, delirium is Simulacrum Splinters or Delirium Orbs if you're luckier. Uh, Metamorph is Catalyst. Uh, Parandus is Parandus Coins mostly. I, I do believe there's a couple of uh, rarer things that can drop, but I've, I've not personally seen things like Parandus Mana myself. Uh, divination cards are divination cards. Uh, essences will be everywhere in these. You get heaps of them. Uh, I think it's very rare for me to, to go on map without getting essences offered twice. Uh, prophecies are uh, prophecies. Ritual means the fragments that make up the ritual vials and or the spe specific ritual bases. The specific ritual bases are individually rare, but there's 27 different ones of them. Uh, so for that reason, you will find one pretty quickly. Fossils are... Uh, Fossils, I think you also get credit for the, uh, for a resonator if you can get... Yeah, you can get resonators from here, but I've only had four socket resonators from Rituals as far as I'm aware of. Uh, so basically, it'll be you'll get fossils before you see a four socket resonator. They're pretty rare. Uh, fragments are things like Sacrifice at Midnight fragments or Shaper Guardian fragments. Talismans are talismans. Talismans suck until uh, level 67, uh, but then in level 68 and up, so once you're in maps, talismans are awesome. Have a look at them. Uh, they're well rolled, they're always well rolled by default and they can be really good. Unique items are unique items, gems are gems. So that goes through all of the things you're going to be looking for there. All right, so now we've only got a couple that are left at this point. Uh, these are challenges that I think are, I think by this point you will have your 12, uh, but I'll go through the next ones which are worth doing anyway. Achieve Ascension. So here, essentially because the Merciless Labyrinth is a prerequisite for the Eternal Labyrinth, Cruel is a prereq for the Merciless, and Normal is a prereq for the Cruel Labyrinth, this is a challenge that is asking you to do uh, 22 different things. You'll need to do six of those uh, trap gauntlets that you'll find through Acts 1, 2, and 3 in order to unlock the first Labyrinth. Then you'll need to do three more trap gauntlets that you'll encounter through Acts, uh, I think it's uh, five, and si uh, 5, 6, and 7 for the Cruel Labyrinth. Maybe, no, I think it's just 6 and 7. Then you'll get one in each of Acts 8, 9, and 10 for the Merciless Labyrinth. Uh, and then you'll encounter six of them in maps and then the Eternal Labyrinth. Uh, because the first 12 of the Labyrinth Trials you need are in deterministic locations, uh, and if you need those, what I would suggest you do is uh, type into your web browser, uh, POE, or POE space Ascendancy Trial uh, and just search for that and then it'll give you a list as to where they all are on the Path of Exile wiki. Uh, but the Eternal Labyrinth ones are randomly scattered through maps. Broadly speaking, you should find all of them within about 200 maps on average. However, uh, big, 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 big caveat on this. 
uh, luck can play a role in this. If you're in solo self found, uh, it can be a lot more than 200 if you get unlucky. Uh, you know, you, you'll encounter people that haven't got their, uh, their sixth trial by the time they're at 400 or even 500 maps. Uh, so bad luck does happen. Uh, if you're in a trade league though, bad luck is easily solved by asking other players for help. There is an in-game channel uh, called Trade820 where people will often sell, buy and sell services in-game. Very early in a league, uh, you can easily get the Labyrinth Trials there. Later in a the league, they're much less often offered, but you will still find them sometimes. So if you monitor the chat uh, in Trade820, the other spot that can be useful is Global 4040. I used to recommend Global 820 as well, uh, but that has gone very, 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 very downhill in recent uh, in recent leagues, and I no longer suggest using it for anything. I just find it's an absolute waste of time. Uh, Global 440, uh, 4040 though is quite similar to what uh, Global 820 used to be. Uh, generally speaking, also these are good places to find cooperative groups as well. Uh, for the uh, the trade 820 ones, people will, it will be much more transactional. People will be like, oh, I've got this, I want five chaos for it. Uh, for the global ones, it's more cooperative, but there will be also be people there taking advantage of cooperation as well. Uh, so there'll be people that are like, oh, let's just sit in, in this channel, wait for someone to post something really good, then I'll jump on it, I'll take it and I'll sell it to someone else. So there's a lot of that sort of thing that goes on in um, in the global channels as well. So with all of that in mind, uh, that's where you go about getting your Ascendancy Trials, uh, or alternately keep mapping and you'll find them. Um, okay, and the last one that I want to raise is Reach Level 90. Uh, this one is probably a little bit easier for a lot of players than Ascending, uh, and it just requires doing a lot of maps without dying. Uh, that's all that's really needed to reach level 90. Uh, that's easier said than done, uh, but the more practice that you get with the game, the easier it will become. Additionally, uh, if you build your character to be more defensively powerful, then that becomes easier again. Anyway, uh, that's all I've really got on the first 15 challenges. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions, far away below. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a good one, and I'll be back with the next challenges soon.